Welcome everyone, this is Hunt Detail. My name is Jacob, thank you for joining me. And certainly uh, you can find Hunt Detail on YouTube. There's a lot of material on YouTube, the Hunt Detail channel, look it up. Or you can follow me personally on Instagram under Hunt Detail. But um, it is now application season. We are pivoting sort of out or phasing out of hunting season and into applications for hunts for 2024. And each state has their own sort of set of rules and, and approaches to this process. And I wanted to share with you my process. Now, um, I, about uh, in 2016, I, uh, several years ago, I went out and hunted pronghorn out west and had a blast doing it. In 2018, went out west and, and killed this bull with my bow uh, in a western state on a general tag. Uh, DIY hunt, and uh, I've done a lot of different hunting out west, and I knew back in 2018 that I wanted to do something out west every year for the next decade. Uh, I'm, you know, I'll be fully transparent, I'm 49 years old, and for the, until I'm 60, I want to do something, I want, really want to hunt elk every year. And, and so, as I share that with you, it's, it's sort of my dream. And, and I would encourage you, as you approach this, to, to think about your dream, you know, your goals, or your, whatever your vision is for your hunt expedition. If it's, if it's going out west, or if it's hunting, you know, Iowa for whitetail, or hunting Kansas for whitetail, or something, of, of something completely different, going into the, the northeast, there's different options for moose up in the northeast i think vermont and maine there's um you know that there obviously you know alaska is a goal for a lot of hunters but what i would say is in terms of sharing my process i would encourage you to take some time and think about what is it that is important to you and your dream because um then you can begin to sort of build a strategy around it and, and, and see what's, what's really realistic and what's not. So, uh, like maybe it's bighorn sheep, you know, in, in Nevada. Well, is that realistic? You know, can I, if I have zero points today, is there any way that I could possibly get to a point where I could draw that tag? And the, and the likelihood is probably no, and outside of some sort of raffle or, you know, some something like, something like that. So for me, when I went out west in 2018, killed an elk with my bow, it was really a life-changing experience. And I came back home and I told my wife, I was like, listen, I want to do this every year for the next decade because I don't want to wake up when I'm 60 and, and realize that I didn't do the things that I could physically do when I was 50, 51, and so forth and so on. And so I'm someone that works out pretty much every day I, I, you know, run, I'm in basketball leagues, I do things with the sole intent of being ready for elk season, uh, in being in shape and not, uh, but I, I've, I've been that way all my life. I've always, working out and exercise is a part of mental health for me. And I won't go down that rabbit hole, but um, when I talk about dreaming, if you say that your dream is to hunt moose or bighorn sheep or whatever game that you talk about you have to you have to decide are you physically capable of doing that and so for me it's the next 10 years i think once i get to 60 maybe i want to pivot to something different maybe it's more of a mule deer a plains mule deer or a, a pronghorn um you know that sort of thing uh because my body isn't uh, able to do what I want to do when, as it relates to hunting elk. Now, the truth is, is I'll probably be able to still hunt elk when I'm 60, but at least for now, the next 10 years, that's really my goal. And so, dream, write it down, and then think about you know the species, like I've said, what it requires of you. Think about the weapon. Is it rifle? Is it bow, crossbow, is there a particular state that interests you, uh, what about trans drive time, how you get there, get back, 
Uh, I'll give you an example. Idaho has already did their randomized or their draw for tags um, back in early December. And I don't participate in that because for me, driving to Idaho to elk hunt is just a bridge too far in terms of drive time. I just don't, I don't. I, I think there are other states that I could do in between here and there and I could have a great experience and not spend 30 plus hours in the car. Um, but again, also you want to think about how many hunts you want to have a year. So for me, it's just one Western hunt and then I'm back home the rest of the hunting season hunting whitetails in, in my home state and then surrounding states. And, um, you know, so it's really thinking about maybe the next 10 years for you. Like, what does it look like? Maybe it's elk this year, but maybe next year it's the following year. It's something else. You also have to think about whether you want a guide or no guide. I'm, I'm, I prefer DIY. I prefer to get my teeth kicked in. I prefer to learn the hard way. Um, I know there's an argument to, to sort of, you know, having a guide and you can push that learning curve. But personally, I like to be able to make decisions on my own and not, necessarily have some to run it by somebody else based on their own agenda because they have their own agenda so the other thing is you got to think about is money and, and, and so uh, you know that a lot of these states are required you, you have to buy a hunting tag so like if I want to buy a point in Arizona or apply in Arizona for elk I have to buy a hunting tag which is or a hunting license for 160 bucks it's a small game license but it's still you know something that I have to commit funds to so you know and then you have to look at the, the cost of those of those preference points or bonus points and then of course you have to understand what those pref preference or bonus points are a, a bonus point is like an extra name in the hat you've got four names I've got two it's more likely your name's going to get drawn but there's a chance that my name could get drawn. So it's a bonus point. Preference point is you have four points, I have two, you're definitely getting. You have three points and I have two, you're, you're getting the tag or whatever. So states like Montana have both a preference and a bonus point system. And so it's really important to understand, you know, what the system structure is and what each, uh, you know, what you want to buy, whether it's a preference point or a bonus point or both. Um, so again, dream, start to think about, start to fill in the gaps and fill in the space. And that's why I have this post-it sheet behind me. I have one of these in my office and it has all the states that I'm interested in, all the species that I'm listed, interested in. For me, my kids, it has my, my ID, my password, their ID, their password, all on one giant sheet. That's why I don't have my sheet up here because I'm not going to share that information with with other folks. But And it also has my points for every year. So I could see, oh, I've got seven points here or five points here or zero points. And it has all the states that I'm interested in. I have to have realistic expectations. Like, am I ever going to be able to hunt elk in Nevada or Utah? I'll, say, I'll pick Utah. And then the answer was kind of no. And and so I decided that I wasn't going to pursue Utah. That might be a mistake. I maybe maybe Utah's better than what I thought. But for me, I've built a strategy of like, okay, I want to build points. I want to think about what is my my short term, my mid term, and my long term goals as I build points for all of these different hunts. And so it's like, oh, ten years from now, I'm going to pull the trigger on this. Five years from now, it's going to pull the trigger on this. Next year, I'm pulling the trigger on this. And so to get to that level of acuity or knowledge, I would say in terms of what each state offers and what you can appropriately expect to draw, I, I would encourage you to, if, you're, if you have an Onyx Elite membership, you get Hunting Fool for free. And Hunting Fool is sort of a tag allocation service or a, 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 it shows you draw odds and gives you an idea of what you can expect for particular states, for a particular game, for particular seasons. And uh, so you get that for free, at least last time I checked with Onyx, Hunting Fool came with your elite membership. Or you can also purchase Go Hunt, which is also a well-known service 
They also ha have mapping. They have a gear shop. But they also have an insider membership that gives you access to that information. And it talks about each of the units within the state. and gives you an idea of what to, to expect in terms of hunting pressure, road systems, terrain, uh, as well as you know draw odds. And so to get to that level of acuity, you're not going to get it necessarily from me. You can li obviously listen to a lot of podcasts. But a lot of that stuff is going to be you're going to need to dive deep into and, and go through on your own. And that's where Hunting Fool or Go Hunt really come into play. But that said, it doesn't do everything for you. You, again, have to build the strategy because it's based on your dream, not someone else's dream. And so, you know, what are my opportunities, you know, in terms of, like I'm building personally points for elk, points for mule deer, points for pronghorn. I'm doing it. I was up until recently doing it for my daughter, but she's decided that she isn't really interested in hunting in, in terms of pulling the trigger, which is perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. Very proud of her to make that decision. My son's a little different. He, I think he, he's someone that I can build points for, and, and I think that he'll use them as when the appropriate time comes, when he's out of college or when he's in college or whatever. So I'm also looking at states through that lens. So it's not only for myself, but for my son, uh, very selfishly. And then again, I want to have a cadence of what like my short, mid, and long-term goals are. So I could go over-the-counter at Idaho or over-the-counter at Colorado. Of course, Idaho is already gone, and all those tags have been grabbed. But there's also secondary draws. Tags are returned. You want to keep track of that. A lot of times those tags are able to be returned in like June or July, May, June or July. It varies upon each state. Um, sometimes it's first come, first serve. Or sometimes they have a, the state will have its own separate secondary draw. But just because you don't get drawn for a particular tag, you, there's still opportunities. But you have to be locked in and in tune with what's going on in, in the landscape. So for me, you know, I look at... Um, well, I just look at a lot of different states. Again, they all, I'm not going to go through them specifically, but what I would encourage you to do is get to know each and every one of them. And then the problem, the rub, is when you have state X, Y, and Z, and they all have different application periods. And then the first state might draw, share its results last. And so you could say, oh, well, there's a good chance I'm going to get this tag. But if I get this one and this one, then I have three tags. And so you have to look at it from the standpoint of like, okay, I got to really put my chips all in on this particular state and hope it happens. Because you could end up with one tag, zero tag, or three tags. And you want to make sure that you don't have three unless you have the time allocated to do all three. Um so it's, it, it, it can be, again, uh, there are services out there that can help you with this. I think the draw or we are the draw is one. There's other services that help you build a strategy. I personally prefer don't prefer to outsource that. I want to own it myself, and that's why I track it myself, and I stay in tune with every state because I, I just don't like the idea of giving that up to somebody else. I can keep up with this up up with this and uh, but again, the idea is that you're building a strategy so that you can pull the lever so that next year, two years from now, three years from now, you're able to do the hunts that you want to do. So that is my approach at a high level. If you have specific questions, feel free to reach out. I'm at hunt detail on Instagram. Hunt detail on YouTube, hunt detail on TikTok. And, um, you know, I know it can be a bit confusing. It can be a bit overwhelming. And, you know, it's just, you're not going to get all the answers for your goals on, a, on a, a particular podcast. It's going to be a function of the research and the work that you have to put in. And the good news is, like a lot of things, hard work screens out other folks. Other folks that aren't that maybe like oh I would love to do that but they won't ever do it that they they want someone else to do it for them and then you know in a future podcast I'm going to talk a little bit about how you build out 
a hunt objective, a hunt plan, and your hunt systems so that you can maximize your time and the logistics that it takes to get to where you're going and not waste time. Because that's the other thing. When you're an out-of-state hunter and you have 10 days or 7 days or 14 days, time is of essence. We all are, we all hopefully have jobs and we all have other life commitments. So how do you maximize your time in the field and not spend your time you know, spinning your wheels or wasting time? So that'll be a topic for another date. Best of luck. Please let me know if you have any additional questions or thoughts. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe, and all the best.